today's episode on EdTech and 2. The first one of the school year, and today we're going to look at Google Meet. And specifically, we're going to talk about how to set up a Google Meet for our virtual day. So, when you go here, you're going to want to come up with a code that you're going to share with students ahead, ahead of time. So, for example, mine might be Young Science if I'm a science teacher, because no other science teacher has my name and would use that code. So, this blue button is not our friend. We're not going to use the new meeting button. We'll simply put in our code and we'll click join. But let's talk about all the bad things with the new meeting button. If you click that, you don't, even though it sounds like you want to create a meeting for later, what that will do is give you a link. And if kids have a link, they can access it at any time, the moment you share it to them, and they can continue to access it later. Same thing with starting an instant meeting. That will just give you a link and you would have to share that with kids right at that moment. That is not good and we don't want to give the link to kids. And if it's scheduled in Google Calendar, it stays in Google Calendar forever and it's forever access accessible until you delete it out of Google Calendar. So to give us the most control, we simply want to create a room code, type it in there and click join when our room is supposed to start. And so when I do that, it will say, obviously nobody else is here. There I am. And I can click join. And from here, I'm going to have a bunch of different controls. I can set up breakout rooms. I can uh, let everyone send messages and chat or not. I can turn that off. I will be able to mute students. A lot of different controls, share my screens, send reactions. Kids will be able to raise their hand. Um, it is really, really great. And the meeting nickname you can see is Young Science. And students can now, with that code, join that. So let's take a quick look on a student device, how they join. So let's take a look at the student view of in joining a Google Meet. So first of all, where they would used to type in that code, that is now search contacts. And so we don't want to do that. They will hit this tiny little, and I don't love this, but the view has changed. They will click this tiny little keyboard icon. Once they click the keyboard icon, they can enter the room code that you've shared with them. So you could share the room code now and it will not allow them in until you have started the room. So since we started the room, as you saw previously in the video, the student can type in the room code and click join. Finally, they'll click join one more time, but there are some options to turn their camera and microphone off before they do join. But let's go back to the teacher side and talk about ending a meet. The final piece to this puzzle that I want to share is the hang up button. And when you hang up, it's going to give you two options. Just leave the call or end the call for everyone. You as the teacher want, don't want to leave kids unsupervised in your room. So you want to end the call for everyone when it is done. But you can always reuse that same code over and over. Um, but it just won't allow kids in until you have started it. And so end call for everyone. And that is it. And the meet is over. Thanks for watching this version of EdTech in 2.